it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be learning how to make this loop here using a little bit of geometry nodes, having some fun with some shader nodes and creating something really, really cool. Before we get into that, if you are interested in learning more about how to make motion graphics, how to create loops, I have a full course designed for beginners to show you all in one place how you can make stunning animation loops, motion graphics for whatever you want. If you want to check that out and learn more about that, it is linked in the description. Now let's get into the tutorial. So here is the full scene of what we're going to be making. It's really cool and pretty easy. Some pretty basic steps here with everything we're touching. All right, so the first thing we're going to need here is a plane. And I'm just going to hit S5, Control A, Apply Scale. We want it to be a little bit bigger than the default scale just to give us something to work with. Now I'm going to hit Tab, right click, and subdivide it. And I'm going to subdivide it. I believe by 30, yeah, 30 looks right about what we're kind of trying to go for here. So what we're going to do is first displace this plane. So I'm going to hit the little wrench icon here for our modifiers and add in a displacement. So we're going to do that. Click new, click this little icon here. That's where you can access your textures. I'm going to click image or movie and go here to clouds. Clouds is my favorite one. It's very simple, easy to kind of understand if you're trying to just add some elevation changes to your model. Now we want to be able to animate this displacement. So I'm gonna hit shift a, we're going to get an empty and add plane axis. I've done this a bunch of times on the channel. It's very useful, super versatile trick. Go back to your modifiers and then go from coordinates from local here to objects. For those of you who've never played with your coordinates, there's actually one called global. And what's really cool about that is if you hit G and move it around, it's that global texture it's playing with. So you can have some fun with that if you want. I'm going to go here to object, which is going to allow us to select our empty and the empty is going to control the displacement. So if I just hit R twice on my keyboard, you can actually see how this kind of works. I'm just moving my camera, I mean my, my mouse around. So conceptually, this is how we're going to make our pieces move and do cool things. Now that that's out of the way, I'm going to hit shift A go to the mesh and grab a cube. I'm gonna hit G just to move it out of the way. I'm gonna hit the period key so we can zoom in on here. We're gonna model this really quick. So what I wanna do is add a modifier and get a bevel modifier, bring my amount pretty close and then give myself like six, maybe five segments. It's really up to you and how sharp you want your bevel to be. So I'm gonna hit tab here, go up here to the face select, select this face and I'm gonna hit I. What the I is going to do is inset it then I'm going to hit E to extrude, and we're going to extrude it upwards. I'm going to hit I one more time to bring it in, and I'm going to hit E and extrude it downwards. And what's really nice about this is the bevel stays true, so we get this nice little model. So this is going to be, in a sense, our particle. Ever since Geometry Nodes came to Blender, I've actually been kind of replacing it with the particle system because I really enjoy it, a lot more control, and I love playing with nodes, so that's kind of what we're doing here. So let's click on the plane, and right up here, we're going to click on the Geometry Nodes workspace. I'm going to kill this page here, and then I'm going to go and click New, Shift A, and I'm going to search up Instance. So we're going to get Point Instance, plop it right there, Object, and let's go ahead and pick that cube. So now we have our cube all over here. It's not that cool looking. What we want to do is get a random node. So this attribute randomize here is going to give us some random scaling. Now, if you don't know much about attributes, you don't really need to know a lot about them to use this node. Just know, okay, if I want to play with the scale, I'm going to type in scale. If I want to play with my position, I'm going to type in position. They're pretty easy default attributes. So we're going to type in scale. I'm going to hit enter. And then right here on replace, right here on float, we're going to use vector. Vector is going to give us way more control. So if we click on vector, it's going to give us more variation already, and we get more control over the X, Y, Z scale. So you can play with the scale here, you can play with the scale there, you can play with the scale here, and you can really kind of play with it to your heart's desire. I'm actually going to leave it at its default because I think it looks pretty good already. I'm going to click on the plane and go here to my displacement and just scale up my displacement a little bit, and then we can just actually go ahead and animate this right now. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on my empty. Go to your edit preferences here on animation. Make sure your default interpolation is set to linear. That's going to make this a perfect seamless loop. Otherwise, it's going to slow down and speed up at the beginning and the end of your scene. So hit the back arrow hovering over your timeline to go to frame zero. That's super important. And then we're going to go ahead and animate 
the Y, X, or Z rotation of our empty. So you're gonna click on your empty and then you're gonna click on this little yellow box. That's gonna be our transform settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click here, go to the very end to make this a seamless loop. We're gonna do 360 degrees rotation and at a hundred, I mean 250 frames a second, we get a really, really cool animation to start with. Now we need to go through and start shading it and lighting it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my cube. We're gonna click shading here and we're gonna start shading. I'm gonna close these windows. I called it pages a minute ago because I couldn't remember the word. It's not a page, it's a window. We're gonna go ahead and make this metallic. And then we're gonna take my base color and bring it down here to the middle. Shift A, get a color ramp. So we're gonna go ahead and make a material. I've made a couple of times here on the channel. It's one of my favorites to make ever. It's really fun and it's very techy. So we're gonna take, go here and I'm gonna hit Shift D on this color ramp. We're gonna make two of them. And then we're gonna go ahead and get a noise texture. Noise texture. Now, if you're not very good at nodes, that's okay. Just follow along. It's a pretty simple setup. So I'm gonna get this noise texture, hit Control T. Now, if that didn't work for you, go to the add-ons in your preferences and enable the node wrangler add-on. It comes with Blender by default. We're gonna use the object coordinate here. And then I'm gonna go here, Shift A, search, get a Voronoi texture, and we're gonna switch Elucidian here to Manhattan, plug the vector into the vector, and we're gonna plug these guys into their corresponding color ramps here, use the color of the Voronoi, plug in there. We're gonna get a mix RGB, so we can combine these two. Now, if none of this is making sense, I'll explain it once we plug all these here together. Color one, color two, and plug all of this into the roughness. So now we have this. What I'm gonna do is bring my my uh, factor over here so I just see the noise texture. I'm gonna bring the noise texture here, bring my detail all the way up, bring the roughness up a little bit and bring this color ramp in. So now we can actually have some fun with these reflections and it looks really nice. And then what we can do here, if we watch the texture, if we bring this mix in, it starts to reveal that Voronoi pattern. So now you have some rough Voronoi and it looks really cool and techy and awesome. And it's one of my favorite things to do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all these guys and hit G to move them out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead, and these two color ramps are really big. So I'm gonna bring them up. I'm gonna go ahead and get a color ramp. I'm gonna hit Shift D on this one and plug it into the emission socket. And we want a layer weight. So we'll plug this layer weight straight into here and we're gonna use Fresnel. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the color that I want the glowing emission to be, which is kind of an orange. And then what we can do is take this blend and bring it so it's super subtle. Now, before we kind of mess with this, let's click on the camera icon. Let's click on the camera icon here and go from cycles to EV. That's what we're gonna be rendering this in. And then just turn on all these little check marks. On your screen space reflections, turn off half res trace, trace precision, bring it all the way up and we're gonna have some really nice reflections with this new setting. Let's bring this emission strength up and then we'll bring that blend even farther down. We want it to be a very subtle reflection here. So we'll say 0 0.01, look at that. It's really cool and very subtle. It's a way to kind of fake some lighting and add something more interesting. The last thing I wanna do here for this particular material is get a bump node. So Shift A, B U M, bump node, We'll plug the normal into the normal. And what I wanna do is just take the color of this Voronoi and plug it into the height. What that's going to do is just add some detail here on the surface of our material to really just pull this together and make it look really, really cool. Now that we have that down, we're gonna go back here to layout. We're gonna go to the final render button here and just see what we're working with. The world brightness needs to be brought all the way to gray. Now we have this boring setup. Let's go ahead and get our camera. Shift A, camera, and kind of point your scene however you want it to look. Control Alt Zero, snap it to view. And I'm gonna hit the G, kind of move it around. Maybe G, middle click, and move it out. Let's see how this is looking. Now we have something that's already really, really cool. What I want to do now is get a light, get a point light. I'm gonna hit G to kind of move it up and bring it over here. So. Something like that. You can really place it wherever you want to place it. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring that power to 1500, 1500 on the scale. I mean, on the power. And then bring the radius high, just like that. So now we have 
almost this very flat sunlight kind of look here. And then we're gonna go ahead and change the color of it to kind of the orange to complement what we already are working with here. And now we have this working with for us. What I'd like to do now is get in a plane. So get a plane here. And then I'm gonna go bring this over here, bring this up, and then I'm gonna hit S5. And then it's not gonna fill it up completely. We wanna fill it up all the way here. Control A, apply the scale. I'm gonna hit tab, right click, subdivide. I'm gonna subdivide it pretty heavily. Something like this probably will work. And then I'm gonna go ahead and scale it up some more so it fills up that camera. I'm gonna add in a modifier, add modifier, wireframe. So now that we have our wireframe, let's go ahead and shade this wireframe. So we'll go here to shading, I'm gonna hit zero. And then we're gonna to go to the render view here. So I'm gonna turn off these views. Click new, I'm gonna delete the principled and we're gonna get in a mix shader. So we're gonna make some transparency and emission. Plug the shader into the surface, we're gonna get a, our transparent node and we're gonna get an emission node. Plug both of those into the shader, doesn't really matter the order here. Bring this up, we're gonna go ahead and get a color ramp plug the color ramp straight into the factor, and we're gonna get a noise texture. Noise texture here, plug the factor into the color ramp. And then if we just play with this color ramp, for some of you, maybe you'll need to bring the white in instead of the black, whatever works for you, just kind of bring that in. Now we can get the color. I wanna use a nice green, a really nice bright green, something like that, that's gonna look cool. Now you'll notice this isn't transparent. This part where it's black, we want that to be transparent and it's not doing that. So what we have to do is click on the shading button here, go here to our settings and blend mode to alpha blend. Now we have transparency, just like magic. And then we just have to bring that strength up some more. We'll go ahead and bring the detail down. And then what I wanna do here is on the noise texture, hit control T to add that texture setup. Because what I wanna do here is animate the texture like this on the rotation. That's how we actually animate it. That's why we ended up doing that. I'm gonna go to the camera just for me because I hate seeing all of the stuff. I just wanna see the scene. If you click on the camera, green camera icon on this right here. Now we can see only what we're working with and that's what I really wanna see here. On my point light, I actually wanna bring it toward the green. That's kind of the look I wanna go with here. And then on the cube texture, Let's go ahead and bring that layer weight brightness really right. So let's bring that emission strength up, just like that. Kind of playing with it like there. So we'll bring it down, kind of play with my camera angle, something like that. And then you can even bring this color ramp in if it's too much. So we'll leave it as this. Click on the camera again. I'm gonna go ahead and get some uh, depth of field. So click on the green, green camera icon, click on depth of field, bring that f-stop really far down so that we can play with this focus distance. And then bring the f-stop back up to get a more wide focus here. So now we have this. I'm going to go ahead and bring my focal length, make it wider. Kind of want to see a little bit more like that. Click on the camera icon, go to color management, and we're gonna go here on the look and bring it to high contrast so we can get a really cool look there. And then now let's go ahead. The last thing we need to do is actually animate this wireframe. So we'll go back to shading. I'm gonna bring this down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring this up, click on this, and we'll go here to timeline. And then we just need to rotate it. So I'm gonna click the back arrow to go to frame zero. Of course, clicking on plane 001 for me, which is this wireframe. I hit the period key to kind of snap these to view. And we're just gonna go ahead and animate the Y. So right click, insert keyframe, go to the very end, 360 to make that a perfect loop, insert. And then now we have this really, really cool, really stunning loop that you can have a lot of fun with. Change it up, make it a live wallpaper, throw it through wallpaper engine, whatever you wanna do here. This is how you create this really cool animation. Thank you guys for watching. And again, if you wanna learn a lot more about loops, I have that motion graphics course. You can learn about that. Check it out in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.